Mm. So first of all, thank you for being here. I think it is very late on a Friday and you've all been extremely uh, awake the past three days. So feel free to take a little nap and relax. <laughs> think of yourselves having that last beer before the, the Friday is finished. I, I, I'm going to have a great beer after this. So, um, so oh yes, a clicker. Is it with this thing? OK, cool. Yeah, so now I will proceed to sing my introduction song to you <laughs> whilst we wait for the technical equipment team. So. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you a question, but I think I shouldn't. We're good? Cool. So yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so my name is David. I live in Hong Kong. Uh, that's where Visionaries started. That's where we live. Um, so uh, what, uh, what we are, have been striving to do for the past uh, seven years, and you know, it depends on for you, for you to judge if, if we succeeded or not, um, is to anticipate uh, the future. Uh, AR and VR have been our main tools to anticipate uh, what are the next things that are um, happening uh, in terms of marketing sometimes or um, tools that can be used for, by different industries. Um, and of course, we leverage existing technologies. So we heavily depend on all the tech gurus here in Silicon Valley to release the coolest new gadgets, and we're always preparing for this. Um, we have been extremely lucky. Uh, since day one, my business partners, they were part of Lego nine years ago. Lego created a department that uh, was responsible for combining the physical and the digital world. Um, they left two years after being inside Lego, but they did such a good job, thankfully, for me, otherwise I would be working in a desk, really sad. Um, no, nothing wrong with being in a desk, really sad. But, um, but uh, the Visionary started, and, and Lego has been our biggest customer since then. So we uh, help Lego envision the future. We do a lot of research and development in terms of um, what we think will be the next big thing, let's say, for, for children to play with, or to engage children, to play with building blocks. Uh, how can we help? Um, go from uh, being a seven-year-old child who plays with Lego and keep that going for the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 years of their life. Um, so just a quick question. In this room, who has not played with Lego in their lives? Okay, good. Thank God for that. So yes. So as you can see, it is a very popular toy. It's a toy that has not changed very much. Um, over, over the years, uh, in essence, the idea is to create creativity, the exploration of, you know, can we maybe educate one day through, through, through building blocks and how can we reuse this? Um, th thanks to all of these research, research and development and um, uh, working with them, we have learned a few things and there's our partners, there's an S missing. So what I did was I changed my presentation last minute uh, yesterday. I, there, there are many cool projects, I think, that humbly, I hope, <laughs> that you could see on YouTube and whatnot, but I'm going to be talking about all the type of projects. Um, some of them are very cool, but some of them, I, I think, there are things that we have learned um, through the exploration over the years of interactive technologies in AR and VR, and, and these are these five things. So we've, we, we, we've learned that we can educate with these technologies, we can communicate, we can visualize, empower, and we can play. So I'll, I'll show you these five projects and, and, and explain to you how we, how we address them. So one of the most exciting projects, it's the ISF Academy in Hong Kong. Um, this was a, the dream child of a, a lady uh, called uh, Diana Libera. Uh, she's a Stanford graduate and a gentleman called uh, Malcolm Pritchard. He's the, the director of the ISF Academy. Um, and their dream was to, or it, it is to be able to educate children about the importance of energy efficiency and sustainability. Um, and regardless of what they do in their lives, they should always remember this. So whether a child grows up to be a you know, programmer or a doctor or a whatever, they should always keep, think about this. Um, and so what we did was we partnered up with a company called uh, G-Hub. Um, and it's a hardware software company doing energy tracking in buildings. And we installed 
breaker, in, sorry, in every breaker of, of, throughout the building, we installed a sensor. So we're monitoring the live energy consumption of every single breaker inside that building. We then group the, the consumption in three uh, groups, uh, lighting, air conditioning, and plugs. And then we help the children visualize what it is that the real-time consumption is. So there's a quick video I'll show you now. Uh, so yeah, so they, they, anyone, you can download the app, the children download the app, they log in, the child then clicks on the building that they're standing on, and then at the bottom you can already see the currently that's the real-time energy consumption. Um, so it's just a tool to make very complex and a lot of data uh, visual for children. Um, and so what we did was we included the augmented reality module, right now it's just for them to it was a way for them to start using the app outside the school uh, environment. So they were taking this to their home and they were play playing around with their parents. Um, and in the future, we're going to be creating more tools. So for example, they can get points through augmented reality if they do a sustainability, um, you know, if they switch off the air conditioning if it's not too, too cold outside. Um, so it's very interesting, this experiment, uh, because, not experiment, this project, that we hopefully will now start doing more of these, uh, because we managed to drive down the energy consumption of the building by 20% on average per month. Now, driving the energy consumption of a building is normally, um, depend, people depend on automation for this, and we did it through behavioral change, just by, just by showing the children their consumption and how their imp that impacts um, their day-to-day -day lives. And then we added the competitiveness elements, so they can see each other's energy consumption, um, you know, you can, basically they can log in and see what my mates are doing in the ne cl classroom next to them, um, and that ensures that they're always striving to reduce their energy consumption. So this is another funny project uh, that we did. Um, it's uh, the other ex side of the spectrum. So this is a $4 million vehicle uh, from a brand called W Motors from Dubai. Um, there were 15, 15 cars made in total. And the, the people who ordered this car, they had to wait a very long time for the car to be delivered to them. And so what the customer wanted, they wanted a uh, product that could be used in virtual reality for the trade shows. It could be used um, in configurators for their showrooms and augmented reality so that their customers could show off to their friends their $4 million car before it got there, uh, as one does, of course. And so we, 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 with this project, we really pushed, uh, we made sure that we thought very clearly about the, um, the different cases that we had to use, the 3D assets, and re reusing, reusing the content and planning this from the beginning made it also uh, more, um, it, how would I say this? It, it made the customer more um, uh, happy about the, the end game because of course they would save money. We didn't have to start that project from scratch every single time. Um, and so this is the augmented reality tool. You know, the customers, they could download their app and they could park this thing anywhere and they could experience the, the Lycan Hypersword. And of course, we had to be very careful with you know, the reflections and the colors and the textures and all these things and optimize it for a, for a mobile platform. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. And they're launching a new car, which is much cheaper. I'm sure anyone, everyone here could afford it. It's only 1.4 million US. Um, so you can pre-order now if you want. And um, we, we are launching an app for the second one. So I think within a couple of weeks, you should be able to download this thing worldwide and you know, show off to your friends the car you will be receiving soon. Yeah, if anyone watched the Fast and Furious film, this car jumps out of a building in Dubai. And that really happened. Twice. Twice. So it literally went back, yeah. Um, so yeah, and then we started getting pictures from, from people putting this little car everywhere. I think there's a photo montage, by the way, that's not real. So don't be fooled. Yes, um, the Jet Furniture Solution. So um, uh, there's an architectural company in Hong Kong with 500 architects and they get bombarded with suppliers of furniture every single day. So they come to these poor architects or interior designers and they're saying, please specify my beautiful furniture. Um, and so what this furniture distribution company asks us to do is, you know, can we simplify that process for them? Because if we simplify the process of the sales guy going to this guy who doesn't want to really see a sales guy, and we develop a tool that the architect can then use to convince, or interior designer, can use to convince his end customer, um, it will be a winning um, uh, solution. And so what we did was, 
We developed an app. I will show you the second part so that you will see there. So uh, can everyone see this screen? Most people can, okay. I don't need this reflection, sorry. I, I, so here, all they have to do is, they, let's say I'm sitting with the architect, we start planning the room, yes, whatever, any size, then you immediately make a 3D model, you can select the different flooring textures, you can select the, the wall color, um, and then you can start adding furniture real time to the environment. Um, so it does help them design in a very easy way and you don't, they don't have to go through Photoshop and they don't have to go through many other softwares. And then here you can select different colors. You can then see a 360 of the products and then we really made sure that the textures were quite accurate. So anyway, so that was the first step and the app has a lot more functions. You could download it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the link later. Um, and then what we did was we, we, we developed a tool for their showrooms so that all they have to do is they, they save it, they upload it to an FTP, and then people can uh, visualize it in virtual reality. So here's an example of, of how the whole thing is working uh, right now. And yeah, we do think that um, virtual reality, and they are quite happy right now with the solution, will be the next big thing that is going to become more of a, uh, a tool, a day-to-day -to -day tool they're going to be using um, yeah, uh, when, when they design these spaces. So there he puts a headset on. And so right now you can, you, we, we, it's easier to create the space on the iPads, upload it, but then inside the space you can add furniture, you can change colors, you can change textures and whatnot. Um, and it's quite cool. Someone said that looks like a pissing tool. I don't know if you agree with them. That's quite funny comments, but it's true. Look at that. Yeah. So yeah, moving on. So that was quite good. Um, and then, um, okay. So this is a, 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 a tool we are developing, and we will never make money out of this tool. But it is one of my passions, and my business partners have been f friendly enough to spoil me. Um, so when I am not uh, talking at AWE about the funny things that we do, I am a wildlife photographer. So I go to jungles in, in, in Southeast Asia, Borneo or Latin America, in Costa Rica, in Colombia, and we look for the backbone um, species of different uh, environments, uh, which are quite important for ecosystems. I d normally do this with biologists and herpetologists, and they have a, a, a very important job, which is they need to be able to make, like, create a census of a certain area and um, you know, measure sometimes these animals, uh, you know, identify if it's a male or a female, and that process is quite stressful for both the animal. You know, you're at three in the morning looking for a little frog in a green jungle, and there's vipers and things. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the whole situation is quite um, difficult, and so we're trying to develop tools now that hopefully they can use in the future. So one of the tools is just using computer vision for them to take a picture of the, of the little animal uh, and then you know, to identify what species this is, this is, has it been registered before. Um, and so now I will show you a very early prototype of this with uh, fake fish. So you know, just the mobile phone takes a picture of the, of the little fish, and identifies the, the size and, yeah, and the species. So if it changes. And so once again, this is not something we will ever sell. Of course, it will be a tool that we want to build um, just for scientists to one day use in the field. Uh, and of course, there's many more complications like data security. We have to be very careful that all these coordinates, all these data is very secure. Otherwise, poachers could go and use this to, to yeah, take the little animals. Um, and then the, the way that we have been using AR and VR to play, and this is just an example with Lego, so uh, this is one of the examples where we do everything, you know, from the conceptual uh, art part, the programming, the design, um, the research, and then the uh, analyzing the data. Um, and it go, Lego Go Build um, it, it helps kids scan a physical shape and then interact with the built shape that, in a digital world. Um, and so. The end game is, of course, we never want the children to stop playing with the physical toys. We never want them to go 100% digital. We do think there is a huge value for them to you know, build things manually. But then, of course, we could always enhance this uh, with the digital world. Um, so yeah, there's a video of that online if you guys want to check it out. And I think that's it. Is that 15 minutes? That's 15. You can uh, take some questions. Oof. 
Thank God for that.